I've been running a website mm. called Opportunity Sri Lanka. Mm. Primary objective is to capture the opportunities in Sri Lanka and get the investors to come to Sri Lanka. Mm. Mm. In that, we have done a lot of work. Mm. Uh, we give information free of charge. Mm. So these are the projects we have, so people can come on board and look at get mm. information. I mean promoting Sri Lanka to the market, mm, mm, right? Mm. And we have done quite a lot of projects, but I'll leave Chris to just to give you a quick brief on that. Mm. So we have done an interview with the Prime Minister also uh, mm. recently. We want to give the message of Sri Lanka to the market, mm -hmm. uh, the, the foreign market. Mm -hmm. uh, so just with uh, regards to the opportunity Sri Lanka that uh, mm -hmm. uh, Chan explained to you as well, sir, we are uh, what we're trying to do is to disseminate information to foreign investors who may find, you know, coming into you know, mm -hmm. uh, developing countries such as ours mm -hmm. uh, as much assistance as possible. So in a way, we are kind of doing the, the quasi role of what the BOI is doing. Uh, information is free of charge, and we have categorized it into several uh, industries. Uh, and the, in the, the feedback that we get is generally from in investors who are interested in what we present mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. So we don't just replicate what is out there in the papers, we actually put our own spin on it mm -hmm. and then we uh, present it in a format that is investor friendly, mm -hmm. so to speak. So in this, in this uh, quest to get out as much about Sri Lanka and the opportunities that are within, we are also interested in uh, talking about and taking to the world opinions of mm -hmm. our leaders, such as yourself, mm -hmm. uh, because these are important things. And people, obviously, you know, the central mm -hmm. bank uh, is a place that you know most investors have a very keen, uh, you know, uh, wish to understand the policy and the decision, mm -hmm. the decision making process behind it. Uh, Dr. Kumar Swami, in your inaugural speech that you delivered on the 4th of July, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that His Excellency the President encouraged you to do your work in a straight way. Uh, and to not fear anybody in discharging your duties. Mm -hmm. Under two months into your role now, what observations or reservations mm -hmm. do you have in the support you have seen mm -hmm. towards making that a reality? Well, I must say, um, in these initial two months, um, I've received all the support I could have hoped for. Mm -hmm. um, both the President and the Prime Minister are very keen in turning around or boosting the prospects of the economy uh, and improving the lives of the people uh, as quickly as possible. Um, now, we, there are some big challenges. Uh, as you know, Sri Lanka has historically been in the what they call the twin deficit mm -hmm. box of countries. That's yes. a country with a challenge on the budget in terms of the budget deficit, and a country with a challenge in the current account of the balance of payments. Yes. Now, we want to get out of that box as mm -hmm. quickly as possible. Uh, for that, we need to have macroeconomic uh, stabilization. And in these two months, the government has continued with the uh, stabilization program it has set for itself. Um, and um, it's being supported by the IMF through an extended fund facility. But this is something we need to do for ourselves. It's not that for, you know, um, whether we had an IMF program or not, the stabilization was critical for setting the uh, stage for a new growth model that Sri Lanka has to develop. Mm -hmm. And this growth model has to be essentially private sector driven, and it has to have exports and foreign direct investment as its key pillars. Um, and in terms of a private sector development model, private se sector led development model, this is not really an ideological thing. It's just that the country's debt dynamics uh, and the fiscal space available as such that a status development model is not very yes. viable in our case. Uh, so we need to get the animal spirits of our private sector activated. Uh, and we need to make the situation, make the um, overall uh, investment climate conducive for foreign investment. So these are things we need to do, and we need to have a big push on the export side. Very good. That actually provides the perfect segue for my next question. Mm. Uh, see, because currency risk mm. associated with frontier and emerging markets such as mm -hmm. uh, ours are a burning issue predominantly front of mind with uh, a lot of foreign investors. 
What actions or decisions does the CBSL consider to allay these fears whilst keeping an eye on the rupee appreciating to a point where we become uncompetitive as mm -hmm. far as exports are concerned in the global market? Yeah. So there are uh, domestic as well as international factors which impact on the strength or weakness of the rupee. Yes. Let me take each of them in turn. Uh, in terms of the domestic factors, uh, the challenge again uh, goes is, is really managing our budget well, um, because the pressure on the exchange rate is really a symptom of an underlying problem, which is the excess demand being pumped out mm -hmm. through the uh, unsustainable budget deficit. That creates excess demand, and some of which leaks into imports, mm -hmm. and that creates pressure on the current account of the balance of payments, uh, eventually on our reserves and eventually on our currency. So that's so the stabilization program that the government is undertaking with the support of the IMF has fiscal consolidation at the heart of it, and it has an enhanced revenue mobilization effort at the heart of that fiscal consolidation program. Uh, also clearly one needs to improve the quality of our expenditure. But really the big effort is on the revenue side. The government understands that. And the inland revenue bill, there will be a new inland revenue bill which will be presented at the time of the budget, which is going to work towards a simpler and fairer tax system. Okay. So the whole tax code is being reviewed. Okay. Um, so, uh, that's, so if we can get the fiscal side sorted out, um, then that reduces inflation because of the excess demand. So the inflation differential between ourselves and our, our competitors and trading partners also comes down. So the pressure on the exchange rate from a competitiveness point of view is reduced. And also the leakage into imports that I talked about through excess demand pumped in through the budget deficit also is alleviated. So these two channels through which domestic pressure on the exchange rate comes about uh, that is from the budget deficit through to inflation differentials, from the budget deficit through to leakages into imports. If you can control the budget deficit, then those two sources of pressure on the exchange rate yes. go away. So that is what hopefully this fiscal consolidation program will bring about in terms of providing, uh, uh, moving towards a competitive and stable exchange rate. The second factor, which is really beyond our control, is what happens in capital markets, international capital markets. Of there, of course, money can come in and go out. So, so you can get pressure on the exchange rate through no fault of our own, yes. simply because you either have a risk-on phase in terms of emerging markets or a risk-off uh, phase, depending on what is happening out there in the world. Uh, there, uh, if, for instance, you have a risk-on phase and, and maybe for a you know, the, the Fed, if the Fed does have a lift off in terms of its uh, interest rates, it's still going to be very shallow and, and slow. Uh, some money may move out of emerging markets, but I think in the, in the medium term, it's likely that we are going to continue to have very low uh, interest rates in, in the advanced countries. Uh, so um, if we get our act together, money okay. could come in. Opportunity for, uh, opportunity for us, and we can bring it. But we want as much as possible to come in the way of FDI. Yes. Uh, clearly, um, and, and FII into our securities, uh, mm -hmm. into our stock exchange would also be helpful. And while we welcome uh, uh, flows into government securities, those need to be carefully managed yes. uh, because uh, they can come in and out and yeah. create um, instability uh, in mm -hmm. terms of the exchange rate. So we want long-term FDI. That would be the That's best right. best Correct. way. The healthiest. To healthiest, yes. But not that we don't want a FII, um, uh, institutional investors. Um, but that 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 is more volatile, and we would need to manage it. And clearly, one doesn't want to allow the exchange rate to appreciate too much, because you get the you know the, the famous Dutch disease, whereby you become uncompetitive. Yes. So we need to, the central bank, if necessary, would need to intervene to contain that as well. Excellent. Now, just on the, probably the same subject as with regards to the FDIs and the way foreign investors look at Sri Lanka, risk management tools are scarce, mm. uh, and generally they are inaccessible in Sri Lanka. 
uh, what plans does the CBSL have, if any, uh, to introduce, for example, currency hedging opportunities for investors mm -hmm. uh, looking to invest here? Well, I, I think um, certainly within the central bank, the risk management function is being strengthened. There is now a separate risk management division, uh, which was okay. created uh, by my predecessor, okay. uh, Governor Mahindran. Yes. Uh, and we are building capacity within our system. And equally, you know, our commercial banks are, uh, and uh, various kind of investment banking arms of, of the commercial banks and other institutions uh, are becoming more sophisticated, there's no doubt. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can, you know, the kind of products that they, that they offer mm -hmm. will also become more sophisticated. Yes. Uh, but you know, it's 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 a process of, of really developing That's right. more more instruments and, and, and more products. Yes. Yeah, and also the awareness about awareness about what's what's, what's available. Absolutely. Yeah. So just moving on to the next question that I have for you, uh, Frank permitting, uh, in the last budget, mm. uh, there was mention of tax incentives for real estate investment trusts or REITs, mm. as they call it in mm. Sri Lanka. Mm. Given their success in not only you know changing the skylines of cities like Singapore, mm. for example, uh, what would your stance be as the banker of the nation mm. uh, to fast track such uh, investment vehicles from mm. point of view of, for example, their long term ability to deliver you know the yields that are consistent with say things like our EPF funds mm. because they are longer term maturity mm. uh, mm. investments mm. and REITs would fit in well with that. Certainly, I mean, this is uh, one of the challenges uh, we have, and, and it's quite common in many countries, uh, many developing countries, is this mismatch, uh, you know, that, that the financial institutions have between their kind of, at most, medium-term uh, right. uh, deposit instruments yeah. and the need for long-term capital, particularly, say, in the housing market. I mean, yes. we don't really have a mortgage industry yes. in this country, which yeah. is what we're trying to develop. Okay. Uh, so that, that was the rationale behind um, that budget proposal. Mm -hmm. um, the finance ministry is taking more of a lead uh, mm -hmm. in that and working with the industry as well, basically, yes. to, to get, encouraging them mm -hmm. uh, to look at ways of, uh, uh, of, of, of uh, developing uh, 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 more long-term instruments. Yes. Um, so I think this is this is something that will definitely come, mm -hmm. and and of you know there is as part of this major urbanization That's right. envisaged the in the country yeah. exactly yeah. The, yeah, the western yeah. region metropolis yeah. and even almost creating a new city in Hambantota. That's right. So all that is going to um, candy development, trincomalee development. Right. So all that's going to have a um, and and the government has the intention of trying to develop five hundred thousand houses. Okay. I think. And there is no fiscal space to yes. drive it through the, the budget. Right. Right. So one has got to try to attract long-term yes. uh, uh, money funding funding for, for, and we need to create the right instruments for That's that. Right. So the, the creation and growth of REITs fits into the um, overall plans of the government clearly. Uh, but that process through a mixture of government facilitation and industry uh, uh, development hopefully will move forward. Mm -hmm. That's very, very good news. Sir. Now, um, what plans do you have to introduce uh, private equity funds uh, and other venture capital in, in incentives to Sri Lanka? Mm. I mean, again, there, um, uh, clearly, uh, Clearly, we need to uh, 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 find, um, uh, you know, the capital markets need development, yes. right? So that's, uh, if we are saying that we want a private sector driven model of development, um, one needs to kind of deepen and, and broaden Broadly. the market. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need, the institutional architecture needs to be uh, developed further with different categories of, of investment vehicles and right. within that we need new products, etc. So these are all, uh, you know, the, the, the direction of travel needs to be to 
attract uh, private equity, to attract venture capital, to get angel investors. As you know, in the, all of these areas, there is a nascent industry yes. which is emerging. Yeah, of course. Um, um, and what one hopes is that if one can create a very good, stable macroeconomic framework uh, and uh, consistent, predictable policies uh, and political stability is maintained, okay. and hopefully the fact that for the first time we have this unity government with the two main parties working together will yes. help us uh, give us uh, overcome, some of overcome number, some of the p uh, political instability challenges. Yes. So if we, ca if we can bring all that together, yes. uh, uh, then I think the, the, these, there will be a natural development yes. of capital markets, I think. Uh, because if the pri as the private sector uh, gains momentum, if, as FDI comes in, you'll find that they will need uh, be a natural progression where the capital markets uh, develop um, as the as the macro environment improves, mm -hmm. and as the private sector gains f uh, further confidence, and you know, generally, mm -hmm. sentiment becomes more positive, mm -hmm. uh, and the need for capital yes. uh, increases. Mm -hmm. uh, and of uh, course, I think in all of South Asia, in particular, loan capital tends to to drive things. Uh, uh, more than anything else, yes. but I, you know, as 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 the demand for capital increases, I think um, I, I, you know, if we can get the private sector activated and the demand for capital increases, then people will look for different and new sorts of uh, of, uh, of of uh, equity financing, uh, and uh, you know, and and we need. I mean, it's a question of. Getting the private sector to recalibrate its risk appetite and then That's think right. in terms of uh, innovative ways of of uh, using capital and having the confidence to take a, a longer term yes. view of things. Yes. Do you feel that uh, that risk appetite over time has been on a more conservative? Uh, it, it has, and, and I think quite naturally, clearly at the time of the conflict, it was of not course. realistic to expect. Absolutely. Um, um, and then one could argue that up to now, uh, maybe the policy framework has not been conducive yes. in terms of the private sector taking a long view mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the development prospects of the country. Okay. Uh, so that's what we need to kind of change, yes. to shift the needle on that right. by giving decent macro framework, giving a decent investment climate, uh, and having predictability in our, consistency consistency in our policies. Yeah. Excellent. Just moving on to another, probably another two more questions we mm -hmm. have some time for. Uh, some perceive that the introduction of the capital gains tax uh, could act as a mid to long term deterrent to investors. Uh, are there any plans in place uh, to make capital gains more equitable by perhaps introducing criteria for waivers? I must say that I am not privy to the conversation, but this is a finance ministry sure. uh, thing. But you know, the broad principles are um, that at the moment we have a very regressive tax system, yes. if we're fair, you know, to have over 80% uh, of, our, of our tax take. Um, being derived from indirect taxes, it is, it's not a, right. not a good situation to be in. Okay. And the Prime Minister in his statement um, last November did say that he wanted to move to a 60-40 mm -hmm. uh, uh, balance between 60% uh, indirect and 40% direct taxes. Now you can't do that overnight, no, clearly. Of course. And, and in moving towards that, one needs to balance various things. So you want a fairer tax system. But at the same time, in moving towards that, you don't want to disincentivize the private sector at a time when you want them to recalibrate That's their right. risk appetite, etc. Right. So, so the timing and pace of this has to be carefully uh, worked it, out. It might prove counterproductive. Exactly, because right. we want basically mm -hmm. for for investment to be taking place and the private sector to becoming be, be becoming more active. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but so you know, it's something. Uh, 
it requires careful working out as to how you know the, the path you from okay. going from 80 20 or 80 plus 20, uh, 20 to 60 40 okay. uh, it's a path that has to be worked out carefully in terms of what direct taxes you're going to okay. use okay. if you're going to uh, tax capital um, when you do it and at what, what pace you uh, you 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 you, the, you know the incidence of tax yes. um, bites etc. Yes. All those have to be carefully worked out. Yes. Now, lastly, um, we would like to hear your thoughts on reasons foreign investors should consider Sri Lanka as an investment destination. Okay. So uh, normally, when you have these various uh, uh, surveys of uh, investor sentiment. Um, you know, political stability and sound macroeconomic fundamentals tend to come mm -hmm. at the top. As I said, the unity government probably gives us the best kind of chance as far as political stability yes. is concerned. And the combination of the stabilization program and the various structural reforms the government has in mind uh, should give us uh, the kind of macro stability mm -hmm. uh, um, we need. And, you know, the other thing is predictability and, 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 and uh, uh, consistency of policies. Now, uh, if you try to examine where the predictability, unpredictability of policies uh, uh, is kind of triggered, you again come down to these twin deficits. Yes. Because what happens is when the, the, the two cash flows, when the government has a cash flow problem on the budget, they <laughs> start, you know, sh doing all kinds of stuff to... Uh, fill the That's holes. Right. Equally on the balance of payments, if there is an issue, then they start putting various assessors and uh, right. para tariffs and things like that. Yeah. So if one can have a, a, a better trajectory in terms of the fiscal consolidation, I think it will help to have more consistent and un, uh, unpredictable policy. So, okay, so what, what, is the, uh, what are the advantages? One is the, the government through its stabilization program is uh, addressing those twin deficits. By addressing the twin deficits, we, we can move to a more predictable and, and consistent policy framework. Then I've talked about the political stability with the unity government. The other thing, of course, is these big development programs that the government has in mind. One is the Western Region Megapolis Project. And associated with that in the Western region is the, um, the, the International Financial Center and, and the kind of the 269 hectares that's being reclaimed around Colombo. Mm -hmm. So all that's going to create a lot of opportunities uh, for infrastructure, for residential and, and commercial real estate, yes. uh, financial services, logistical services. So, you know, there's a whole gamut of stuff that's going to come with it. Um, Hambantota is going to be developed. A lot of Chinese investment is envisaged there. Mm -hmm. And then the same company which did uh, the master plan for the Western Region Megapolis um, is doing a master plan for Trincomalee. Okay. That is uh, Subana Jurong of Sing mm -hmm. Singapore. And the idea there is that the Singaporeans will invest, yes. i.e. Singapore, which is the enterprise which take Singaporean companies out, yes. they are going to be working uh, with us mm -hmm. to s see whether they can attract Singaporean companies mm -hmm. to come in to invest around this master plan they're developing. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, there could be uh, um, uh, Japanese and, and Indian investment, I mean everywhere, even even in the, in the International Financial Center, uh, investment from all over the world will be welcome, the Western region, etc. Western region megapolis plan. And then the Japanese are doing a master plan for candy. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, the investment around that can come. Mm -hmm. The other, so those are the, so we have political stability, macro stability, more consistent policies, these development programs which envisage large, uh, very large uh, FDI, including PPPs. Mm -hmm. There'll be quite a lot of opportunities for PPPs mm -hmm. around the infrastructure development uh, as part of these large area development programs. Then the other part of the piece, is, uh, um, other part of the landscape, is the, um, the, the, the trade agreements that the government is signing. Uh, now the current 
free trade agreement in goods with India is being broadened and deepened. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're trying to deepen the agreement uh, on, tra on goods, trade in goods, and to include services, technology, training, on, and investment yep. on top of that. In addition, a partnership agreement is being negotiated with China, as well as one with Singapore. And we already have an FTA in goods with Pakistan, which is being invigorated. So by, and, and then on top of that, uh, we made the application for the restoration of the EU's GSP Plus, mm -hmm. and the balance of probability is in the, in the next four or five months or so, mm -hmm. that should be restored. So say by this time next year, mm -hmm. one, I think the USP for yes. Sri Lanka would be to say that we have preferential access to a market of three billion people. Mm -hmm. India, China, Europe, Pakistan, uh, and Singapore. So, to, to you, I mean, a possible scenario is to get the Chinese yeah. investors to come and invest here to sell into India, vice versa. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of Indo-Pakistan trade that goes through Dubai. Yes. But with the free trade agreement with both countries, maybe we sure. can we can. Yeah slice off a bit of that. So that's another opportunity. And then, of course, we have this access to Europe as well, for whether it's China or India uh, investors. Uh, I think the Pakistanis have their own GSP+, plus, but the other two countries can certainly can locate here and get access to Europe on a preferential basis. So, so you know, all this, if you bring together with our strategic location, because we, I think we are very well placed to be a financial hub, to be a logistical hub for the region. We have good relations with all the countries in the sub-region, yeah, in the South Asia region. So, I mean, there are people who say, you know, you're trying to start uh, an export-led strategy at a time when the new normal for the global economy is slow growth, sluggish international trade, etc. But in my view, I think that will be trumped by a uh, the 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 uh, strategic location yes. and b the excellent relations that we have. Uh, with many, all countries now, including the capital surplus countries of East Asia. Yes. You know, J China, Japan, uh, Korea, Singapore, say, in, and, and the way they operate, you can leverage good government-to-government -government relations to get their companies to come Company. here. They operate in a different way from, say, the Western companies, yes. etc. So when you bring all this together, it's a good time to come. It's a good time to come, even, even, even for Western companies you know, stabilizing economy, better investment climate, preferential access, strategic look to massive market. Mm -hmm. It's not just this 20 million here, it's, uh, exactly. you know, it's the 3 billion that we can talk about. That's right. And, um, and, and uh, um, you know, location, which is really been extraordinary. I mean, you know, over millennia we've been traders in the middle of the Indian Ocean, so we are now kind of going back well, to our roots. To yeah. Yes. And then, like you said, you know, by ne this time next year, we may have the perfect formula mm -hmm. in place here mm -hmm. for us to, you know, uh, welcome more foreign. Absolutely, it can, be, can, it can be transformative. Yeah. And it's uh, just on behalf of our team, I'd like to thank you uh, mm -hmm. for your thank time, you. and you know, also to wish you all the best. Thank you. In all the it's actually quite, uh, you know. Sorry. It's here because you've only been two, two months, yeah. <laughs> I think, in the, in the job. So, and uh, your grasp, obviously, you no, know, no, with your no, experience. No, 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 so it's, yeah. you know, we are heartened by the fact that professionals such as yourself are in these positions because I think this is the type of leadership we need to take Sri Lanka on its rightful journey and where we, we should be in the future. So thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank Dr. Kumar. Thank you. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to meet you. Thank you.